Yeah, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I will present about our uh, open source package DASC geomodeling, which is uh, what we use as a calculation core of our commercial product, Lizard Geoblocks, it's called. That's the logo. And we do agile geoanalytics with it. So you, of course, all know what geoanalytics is. Um, what we call agile, I hope, will be clear in my presentation. Um, so uh, a bit about myself. I'm developer at a consultancy company, consultancy company in the Netherlands, Nederlands Schiermans. Uh, my background is actually in physics, or so transitioned fields uh, five years ago. And I've been contributing to open source, uh, mainly Shapely PyGeos, uh, last couple of years, and also DAS modeling, geo modeling, of course, and earlier TrackPy, which is a bit of a niche project. Uh, so Nelen Schirmas is located just at the canal in Utrecht. Uh, you see there's actually an Italian restaurant over there. Uh, and um, wow, well, we just like one third is uh, developers, two thirds uh, consultants. And we do stuff with hydrodynamics mostly. So uh, hydrology, we have a lot of hydrologists and uh, uh, civil engineers. Uh, and we make two products. One is a data warehouse analytics platform, a Lizard, and one hydrological and hydrodynamical model, uh, 3DI. Uh, we're working uh, on that. We developed that in-house. So first, I will start with some context, because the use case is pretty important for this uh, library. And from that, I hope to kind of show um, why the way we are working with DAS geomodeling, which is open source, is, uh, is useful. So in the context here is a Lizard, which is a data platform. It's kind of can ingest different types of uh, GIS data. It uh, well integrates it, and you can uh, well view it in a website. You can build dashboarding on it, and you can do uh, decisions based on that dashboard. So that's uh, a Lizard sits right in the middle. So it's a little little image of this animal, which is not a lizard, by the way. But uh, I leave it to you to decide what animal it is. Um, uh, so Lizard Geoblocks is part of Lizard. Um, it, what it does is solve this, uh, well, seemingly simple problem that uh, GIS data is often derived data uh, with rather simple operations. For instance, our hydrological model gives us the water level in meters above sea level. But if you get a map that says water level, it has no meaning unless you know what is the elevation, right? And you need to subtract those two to know how many centimeters of water will be against your house or in your garden, um, or on the roads. Uh, so this subtraction is something that Geoblocks does for you. So it's a, basically a post-processing action on the data. So we have many other examples, of course. Rain deficit is now important in the Netherlands and in many other European countries. Uh, also, a bit more complex one is heat stress. It's a rather complex function. There's a model for it uh, of uh, land color, elevation, wind strength, land use. And you, um, well, you can compute that also. Uh, Lizard Geoblocks lets you, let you just define these data relations without uh, doing a computation. The computation is only done uh, when you look at it, basically. So when you uh, open up a web browser and use a map viewer or just export a TIFF file or whatever, then the computation is done. So uh, using it looks a bit like this. So this is, I hope to give a live demo, by the way. But this is, uh, you, know, you, you, you can pan the screen and you can see all the operations, and they are connected with little wires. Uh, this one is a bit unwieldy. It's like 125 operations. Uh, there's also a text editor, which I like to use. Uh, but you, if you define this whole relation, there's one uh, end product, which is a well, map layer. And you can directly just visualize that. So you can change your analysis, look at the map. Change your analysis, look at the map. And there is this agile component uh, com coming in. So does geomodeling to coming back to open source. Uh, is the, the core, the calculation core of it. So it does all the processing, all the delayed and parallel gist analytics that is necessary to, to generate these maps. That's done uh, with uh, task geomodeling. It's just there on, the, on GitHub uh, with the BSD license, which is a permissive one. And it doesn't do, it's not a web API or any, anything. You can build it yourself, of course. And it doesn't do currently no reprojection, resampling, because, I mean, we do it in our own database, and uh, we just didn't have the time to implement that, which is perfectly feasible. Uh, and also, uh, it has no database interfaces yet. Um, so, I mean, just taking a step back, so what mostly is done in, in, in GIS is uh, batch processing. So you have your data, a lot of data mostly, and you have a script or a well, workflow in, in Grass or whatever tool you like. 
uh, and you process it and you have an output and that you publish by uh, some uh, means. Uh, what does geomodeling does is uh, stream processing. So it just lets you configure the, no, you need the inputs, of course. It lets you configure the, the script or the, the, the task graph, we, we call it. And the outcome is not uh, calculated only when you need it. It is calculated. So this difference, uh, well, it avoids computing times, of course, uh, pre-processing times. But also, um, well, like I said, if you have direct feedback as a data scientist or a geo data scientist of your uh, model, then you're able to uh, much more quickly uh, create your script, by, by the way. I have, uh, well, I did this stuff also a uh, while back. I had to calculate the slope of the highways in the Netherlands everywhere. And I had this nice script. I had a one highway to test with, and it worked. I went to the customer, did it for every uh, highway, and then the second highway he looked at, it was totally off. So um, actually, what I should have done is run it over the complete data set. But then I would have to wait a lot of time, a few hours, to, to get my feedback. So if, you, if I would have done it with uh, GeoBlocks, which didn't exist back then, then I would have given gotten this instant feedback. I could just pan to that highway and see uh, what's wrong. So this is really, we only realized after we, we made this, basically. So um, there's also other advantage, of course, uh, storage costs. That's the main reason why we made it. Uh, if you have like 20 views on your data, you don't want to kind of multiply the storage cost by 20. Um, and of course, uh, operational data that refreshes like every five minutes, uh, it's well, it's feasible to visualize that uh, via these kind of means. But of course, you can't do everything. Um, uh, some operations are non-local, so they require the whole data set to compute just, let's say, one pixel. Um, well, you can't do it in this way. It's just unfeasible. And of course, you notice a la higher latency if you look at the maps. But that is, uh, I mean, doable still. It's uh, mostly one, uh, under one second. So. Um, so, what if you would uh, use it yourself? You can just uh, pip install, conda install, or uh, just clone it for, from GitHub. You could, um, well, you import DAS G modeling and you construct a thing that we call a block, which is a bit of a strange name, but it's kind of a history to it. So, we call it a block. Um, I think brick would be a better name. Uh, it's, it's a map layer, basically. So, you open a data set, and that stands for a map layer without putting in any location or something. Uh, one example I always like to give is just add the number two, and that's it. And nothing has been done. Only this, uh, this expression, this uh, uh, directed acyclic graph is uh, well generated in the background, and only when you uh, query data from it, then you get a uh, well NumPy array, in this case, a buffer, which you could convert to a PNG image to display on the map. And that is also how this works. So this code runs in the web service, basically. Uh, so why Dask, you might be asking some user, who is using Dask, uh, if I ask? Some people, so that's great. Um, so just to explain what Dask is, it's a library that is used to manage big data in Python, big data that doesn't fit into memory and that you want to parallelize in processing. You have a notion of an out-of-memory array that is... Uh, consisting of chunks which are only loaded uh, from disk uh, or from a server database uh, when you do computations on it. So if you do uh, operations on a Dask array that has uh, three chunks, you get these kind of graphs, uh, which can be uh, executed by the Dask scheduler that does it parallelized, uh, uh, single-threaded, multi-threaded, multi-processed, or on a cluster, depending on which scheduler you take from Dask. This is all uh, implemented by this Dask. It's a very big project. It's very interesting uh, to work with. So uh, what we do in Dask, uh, is, uh, sorry, in Dask geomodeling, is when we do get data, actually first a computational graph is generated, and then that is submitted to a calculation cluster. Uh, and that way, we are also always doing stuff in parallel if the graph allows it. Uh, so, just to example, um, there's this function that you would normally not use is get compute graph. It's an internal function, and it just backpropagates this request. We call it this this subsection through your um, through your um, your view your 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 your, your class graph. Uh, it goes backwards uh, through this tree. 
because every uh, block knows what it's need, needing for doing the computation. So for instance, uh, a smooth or a convolve operation would need a bit more data to compute the outcome. Uh, it happens here. And then this gets submitted to Dask, and Dask, I mean, we treat it as a black box, so we, we submit data and we get it back. Um, and through the settings of Dask, we can tune how it uh, operates. And then it, uh, this gets your results, basically. Um, so currently, uh, well, the way this is implemented now is that each operation needs to be, uh, needs to have a class in Dask Geomodeling. So it's actually a lot of work to make new, well, it's not a lot of work to make one operation because the classes are very small, but it does take effort. So these are the things we have done because we needed them. But I mean, this is very extensible. You can just subclass this base class in your own package and just uh, make whatever you, uh, you want to do. And how you to do it is in the documentation. Uh, so it's extensible. And uh, we are also still working on this. Um, so to summarize, uh, yeah, uh, I have some application examples at the end, by the way. So to summarize how it works, so first you define this data relation. Uh, and this you can just, uh, well, save. You can serialize it to JSON also, just to store it in database, which is what we do in uh, Lizard. And then at the moment you compute, you just get this JSON or this, uh, this, gra this data relation back and you use it for computation. And this way you can do a streaming processing uh, uh, of uh, raster and vector data. Uh, so uh, a few applications that we made with it. Um, one is uh, the, the heat stress map. It is, uh, it's in Dutch, sorry, but I think the, the idea is clear. You have here uh, the Dam Square in Amsterdam. It's a uh, central square. Here's the station in, up north. And this is Dam Palace. I don't know if the pointer in that does work. Um, so the idea here is that uh, the municipality wants to know what happens if they plant trees or they change the, 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 the concrete to grass or something. And uh, you can just draw these edits and then uh, hit OK. And then you can directly see what is the effect on heat stress there. It's, an, it's a nonlinear effect, so it, it doesn't uh, add up. Uh, so you really need to do this whole computation, which involves uh, all the steps, and you can just, with this slider, you can just uh, see before and after planting the trees. So this just shows this uh, power of this on-the-fly calculation uh, with dust geomodeling. Another one is uh, Blue Label. It's an entirely different example uh, with, with, which uses vectors, basically. Uh, so what, what well, uh, the city of Rotterdam wanted is, um, for e each building, they wanted to put a label on it, how risky it is for, for floods, for, for if it, uh, there's a peak uh, rainfall then uh, they want to know uh, what is the risk of flooding. So you have all these scenarios with uh, where the water is. And, uh, so based on the, the outcome of the hydrological model, you can uh, well, assign a certain, uh, take the maximum basically of the water level around the building and assign a label to it, and which is also done with GeoBlox here. Um, so this shows that it also works with uh, factor data. So uh, yeah, in the future, uh, so this library is, uh, I think we, we published it like three years ago, and well, we did some work on it after that, but then we're just maintaining it now, uh, because we, I mean, for us it works. Uh, but still, I think there is some uh, promise here, um, because uh, I think these kind of problems pop up in many other systems, uh, these streaming uh, uh, analytics. analytics. Uh, so what I would like to do is get it more closer to Dask, or maybe Dask Geo Pandas, um, which is a new uh, effort to, to do parallelized processing of uh, geometry uh, data sets. And also we've been looking into uh, looking with uh, HPX, which is a C library for, uh, well, this kind of uh, parallel processing things. Um, and also I, extending Dask Geo modeling operations is of course very, uh, a good idea, uh, especially from this conference I learned there's a lot of more cloud formats that we could input and output, so that's something uh, we like to work on in the future. And machine learning, I mean, just uh, applying models is also something that is uh, feasible. Uh, so, I mean, I think I'm a bit early, so if you have questions, uh, I'd like to take them. Uh, if you need some more information about DAS Geomodeling or the commercial version, here are the URLs and, of course, uh, the other project that did is built on uh, GDAL and friends and uh, Python wrappers. And, uh, scientific libraries also uh, acknowledged. Uh, and, uh, well, if you have any questions, uh, please ask them now or contact me uh, afterwards. Thank you.